right? Okay, thank you for inviting me to this meeting here and I'm very interested in all the stuff going on with CIFA. Um, I haven't come across that so far and uh, has been a very good conference for me so far. But now World Heritage, um, you see my question marks and my question. It started all with Great Britain, 1987. Um, Hadrian's Wall was inscribed on the World Heritage list as a natural site. We have been there yesterday on a little excursion. It was very nice to be there again, despite all the wind, but probably that's part of the cracks. Um, later on, almost 20 years later on, the Germans thought, well, we have something similar. It's a bit longer, but equally important, and we would like to put it on the World Heritage List. The original idea of a national proposal was rejected, and we came up in a close cooperation with Great Britain, which in due course accepted to give up the national nomination, Hadrian's Wall, in order to create something new, frontiers of the Roman international or transnational um, site. When the other German Ration Demons in Germany was accepted on the list, um, it, the World Heritage Committee um, wrote that it also recommends that the nomination be seen as a second phase of a possible wider phased serial transboundary nomination to encompass remains of the Roman frontiers around the Mediterranean region. That was the idea which we followed up from that point on and the next step was in 2008 the Antonine Wall being inscribed on the list under this heading. However, meanwhile World Heritage Committee had changed a little the rules they have made a little mistake. They assigned, although it was not supposed to be um, a special um, outstanding um, statement of outstanding universal value to the Antonine Wall, which in the future led us into a, probably a wrong direction. But coming back to the original concept, based on that phased serial transnational nomination, we thought, well, yes, on the basis of this so-called Koblenz Declaration, we intend to do with all this running around the Mediterranean world. That was the idea. 19 states, hopefully they will continue to be states, um, were, were and were, uh, were supposed to be involved. On that basis, in 2012, Tunisia put their parts or some parts of their frontiers of the Roman Empire into, the, into their national tentative list, but under the heading um, of the frontiers of the Roman Empire concept. The question was how to proceed. We have a lot of sites running all around the world, and again the storage space exceeded. I hope I can continue. Um, no, I can't. This seems to be some kind of blockage, yeah. Um, it, involve, it would involve, um, after the land barriers, which have been already inscribed, Antonine Wall, Hadrian's Wall, um, Upper German Ration Limes, and that is missing here on this map, because it is already inscribed. It would involve um, river Rhine frontiers on the Rhine, on the Danube. It would involve um, tar parts of the frontiers in urban settings, um, with particular problems, and of course it would also involve desert frontiers, um, spaces or sites somewhere out in the far and um, distant. The idea, and this was what we still cherish as the ideal approach um, for a World Heritage Site, and I refer with that to Christopher's um, paper, um, it involved, involved by nature, by origin, by its basic idea, um, international cooperation over three continents. No other World Heritage Site has that potential. Um, of course, transnational collaboration is a main theme in all of it and has been exercised in several international, at least European, projects. The idea would be to have common management principles, to um, have joint development over the years and decades to come, and of course all that backed and related with international research. So far the idea, so far the ideal, and our probably wishful thinking. Um, of course we know now over the past years um, 
some states parties um, have not only little difficulties, they have serious problems. We have serious problems in <coughs> our thinking and rethinking what a monument needs, how to deal with it. Is it probably even bad to be a World Heritage Site in some um, conflicts? Um, but I would like to leave that, a pro, um, that away because that is something we cannot really deal from this point. The question for us was how to continue with extending the frontiers of the Roman Empire World Heritage Site. And following that original idea by a phased approach which would mean, okay, probably state-wise or be national extensions. Um, we try to check and balance what the possibility, what the advantages are, what the disadvantages are. Some of them I put out on the right, and I'm not going into all of them. Um, but um, we, we still thought this was the best way to manage this approach in order to proceed to this goal which I mentioned with 19 states being involved. As I mentioned already, on our way rules and regulations have been changed. And despite the fact that we were reading the operational guidelines usually on the last, um, on the last um, um, edition, um, we were under the problem of dealing with the question do we refer to the committee and its, um, its sayings in 2005 and 2008? Or do things like the Ittingen Report, which was one of the probably more successful international um, expert meetings, um, do we refer to them and forget what the committee has been said before? In this case, we thought the committee is more important for us because, I have to confess, it suited us better in the approach of a phased nomination. Well, it turned out that um, quite a number of these aspects were probably, we tried to ignore or bypass, were not to be ignored. And over the discussion, is in particular with ECOMOS, it came more and more to the question of, with all these aspects of um, one outstanding statement of outstanding universal value with one being dependent for all states on one state party or one part of the monument being in danger, the whole being in danger, that we would have to deal with a potential, I probably can see it here, with the splitting up of the whole idea into various sections, which was something we really fought for a long time because we thought it was giving up the ideal, the main idea. So the idea of having a common statement of outstanding universal value, which would have had to be modified in cases of the extensions, um, that well, was not the idea of ECOMOS. They said, well, this is way too complicated. You have to compartmentalize um, your World Heritage Site. And in order to do that better, to understand that better, what is there to compartmentalize, they asked us to do a thematic study. If anybody is interested, I have it here printed out. It's, um, and um, it's not yet accepted, but we send it in um, to ICOMOS and to World Heritage Committee um, in order to be approved. Um, we were asked to do a thorough study of what can be expected in terms of the world frontiers of the Roman Empire as a World Heritage Site. So, first of all, we were asked to name all those places which potentially could be part of that whole thing. And their authenticity, integrity, and so forth. But then to make a decision to choose, not to choose, but to point out what of all those maximum number of sites um, might be considered for nomination as World Heritage Site. And that would lead to the questions how these sections, these, compartmental, these compartments um, or these parts may be um, delivered and how they may be defined, of course, coming always back to the question which you see on the very bottom right um, of the outstanding universal value, the statement, how can you describe this outstanding universal value. 
We therefore did this big thematic study. I'm not supposed to read it all. It's um, just to show how we extensively we tried to cope all um, the aspects possible. But what I would like to point out is that it more or less came up as a conclusion with a nomination strategy. And this is something I want to go into, um, uh, into, a bit, uh, into it a bit further now. For the site selection, it was of course important that to, um, it was important to um, do more or less the same approach, not sort of national approaches. And as the Austrians and the Germans, Bavaria, were the furthest in, in a nomination um, process or in writing up a nomination dossier, um, it was quite good to see that almost everybody accepted um, this approach of the question of scientific importance and the contribution of a particular site to the outstanding universal value as a whole, um, the question of the state of conservation, and of course the manageability of a site. Is it something which can be preserved or where we have the idea or the hope to be able to preserve it for the future? And you see a little additions, and some state parties had originally additional ideas of what they wanted to introduce or to include into their, um, um, into their selection criteria, but we managed to pin it down to these three main aspects. Interesting in the study was that in the original approach, a quite, some state parties had different criteria for the nomination, for their nomination in mind. But in the end, we all agreed that two, three, and four would be um, the nomination criteria, the World Heritage criteria to be um, under which the, uh, the frontiers of the Roman Empire should be nominated in the future. These were the three criteria which we had used in all three nominations so far. A very positive aspect was that within a very few number of weeks, each state party, at least in Europe, which were asked, um, contributed their, um, their data from their national data for the thematic study. And it was quite impressive to see um, that all followed the way we asked them to do that. And this, I think, is already a very good sign towards a good international um, um, cooperation. So we ended up with thousands of sites. Um, we collected from the literature also in North Africa and, and the Near East. But one of the most important points was in studying the various aspects of the frontiers of the Roman Empire, comparing them, um, pointing out their um, individual um, um, specialities, um, it was uh, part of the thematic study to come up with various um, aspects. And that is, for example, we have land boundaries, which are already inscribed. We have riverine frontiers on the right and the Danube, a mixed boundary um, in Dacia. We have desert, whoops, yeah, no, can you see that? No, probably yeah. We have desert boundaries, and that doesn't stick to the continents, uh, but it continues in, um, to the southern part of the Near East. And then we have, in particular, in Cappadocia and um, North Syria, uh, mountain um, areas. And with these special characteristics, we thought it is the right point to follow up an ICOMOS advice and to separate right now at this line here, which is um, to concentrate on Europe. That alone is already a big challenge because including Great Britain, which is somehow out because everything of the frontiers of the Roman Empire in Britain is already on the list. However, they are in as being already part of the World Heritage Site. So all in all, we have 10 states parties alone in Europe to deal with that. And not all of them are still very friendly on their main political points. I would like to point out in that respect, which is something we always going a little around, Hungary, Croatia, Serbia, there is some animosity, fortunately not on our level, which is, I think, one of the most important aspects of world heritage for me, that you bring the people who are really interested in the subjects together and make them work together. 
The synaptic study tried to identify as part of their study um, the d specifics of particular um, parts of the, um, of the frontiers, and you can pick out some um, differences. For example, that um, in the middle Danubian area, we have a lot of watchtowers, whereas lower Danube, there are none. Um, we always are in the question, is that a question of research, state of research, or is that more behind it? But anyway, at present, we try to see this as characterizing the frontiers. And as I mentioned, um, we had as a very important aspect of this thematic study, the exercise of, of pointing out those sites which are worthwhile or should be nominated. And this um, is what you see in green. The red ones are sites which are um, uh, which are left out, which, uh, sorry, no, the green ones are supposed to be nominated and the red ones are those who be left out. We we realized that the frontiers could be correct in, in Europe could be characterized in four groups, and with that I mean um, I would like to leave out, or rather five actually, um, the four up there is well the Rhine and Danube in four groups, and an additional one in Asia, and that leaves out of course Hadrian's Wall, Antonine Wall, and the Upper German Ration Limes. For Germania and for Ferio, Dutch and Germany, we were able to point out to, to formulate a distinct statement of outstanding universal value. One of the characteristics there are waterlocked sites, in particular in the Netherlands, with beautiful and very um, important um, timber preservation and, of course, all sorts of other organic material. Also, the Dacian Limes had, seems to us, um, is able to show a distinct um, um, OUV, but the Danube parts we were not able, although we had some differences in the characteristics, to formulate distinct OUVs for that, for these three parts which are mentioned here. The point is that we realized, or that we came to the result, we can see that only as one entity, the whole of the Danube lemus. However, and this is where it's becoming critical for management reasons, we proposed right now to start with a nomination with the western um, part of the Danube Limes, Bavaria, Austria, Slovakia, and Hungary, and add later as a major extension with a particular feature of the extreme late early Byzantine um, features um, of the um, eastern part um, and forming that with an extension also and an alteration of the outs statement of outstanding universal value in a second stage. Again, storage, although I still have some minutes. Uh -huh. Yeah, the problem with this fragmentation is in a particular problem for Germany and Romania. I'll just show it on the basis of Germany. Although there is the idea that the World Heritage Community wants to reduce the number of sites, or not having too many, in particular European sites, we are having in Germany in the future three different World Heritage sites, frontiers of the Roman Empire. The existing one with Great Britain, and then there will be the Danube Limes, and then there will be parts of the Lower German Limes. And similar things is happening, will be happening in Romania. And this is something we are not really sure that this is the right approach, but it was pointed out by Ecomos, well, and that's why I left it as a problem, not so much a challenge. It will be overcome. I don't know. We shall see. There is an ambitious timetable for the next nomination, and that will be um, as I pointed out, the Western Danube Limes. Um, hopefully, if we really manage to finish in July to do all the translations, checking ups, and so forth in January next year. Now, the question is, and I'll go come to the end of my paper with that, is how do we manage a complex thing like that? Up to now, we have already a clear system. There is an intergovernmental committee. Um, from there, we have a management group which meets regularly to exchange best practice to come to joint operations. We have, as an international advisory group, the Bratislava group and all that 
deals with our World Heritage Site. Well, what we propose now is to, to, to duplicate the International uh, Intergovernmental Committee with the management side, with a management group for these various um, new frontiers of the Roman Empire sites, um, no matter whether they are green or blue or yellow, um, and bring that all together as a common principle, under a common principle and common framework, um, lifting up the advisory group, the Bratislava group, into that level, bringing all these in the future for European World Heritage Sites into one cluster, the common principle which was demanded and um, searched for by ICOMOS. I will end with this sort of hopeful picture. Um, you can see sort of this cluster of um, the various parts. Of course, the gray part is something for the future. Um, and probably the graph is not co exactly correct because this and these, the dark blue ones, are already considered to be a one World Heritage Site. And we'll have a new World Heritage Site here, one here, and one here. And I would like to end with that. And thank you very much for your attention.